Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd and Korea. We are continuing to look at uh, budget cycles. This is the new Capenna Confluence cycle now. We're moving on to confluences from the modal spells. Confluences are a nice little bump up, I think. Please hit like and subscribe. You know what? You probably shouldn't though. Yeah, don't, don't, don't. So what are we talking about? Again, these are the new Capenna Confluences. What makes a Confluence different than a modal spell? Basically, a Confluence gives you multiple choices and you can choose the same mode more than once. So they both have a bunch of modes. A modal spell will let you choose one. Confluences, all of these let you choose three and you can choose the same mode multiple times. So if you really like the one mode, you just do it over and over. And, yeah, and it's uh, it can be a lot of value right there, that's for sure. These are actually very budget at 55 cents and under. We discussed the original confluences some time ago, so I think it was about two months ago I did the original confluences. I put these in order of cost because best to worst is very subjective. I usually try to put them in best to worst and, or sorry, worst to best I should say, and uh, yeah doesn't really work with these because they're very, very si situational. Even though some of the low cost ones, I'm like, mm, should that be low cost? I don't know. <clears throat> and again, as I said, you can select combinations. So these are almost like having entirely different spells. A mode is kind of, or a modal spell is kind of like having four or five different spells on one card. This is like having, I don't even know. I. I, yeah, the potential combinations get like pretty astronomical after a while. It, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Number five, Riveteer's Confluence. So this is our done pick here. Two, black, red, green. Choose three. You may choose the same mode more than once. Yeah, I'm not going to read that every time. Uh, you draw a card and lose one life. Draw three cards, lose three life at most. Not bad. It deals one damage to each creature and planeswalker you don't control. Again, you can do that three times. So with any kind of damage booster, that's going to be like six or more. That's getting to like one-sided board wipe territory. And for five mana, that ain't bad. That's for sure. You may put a land card from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. So if you've got a deck where you're getting lands, or you're milling and you're getting lands in your graveyard, or you're able to get uh, cards to your hand, which is usually much easier than to just straight to the battlefield, you can really take advantage of this. Even just lots of card draw, right? You're going to end with a, some extra lands in hand, and this is going to let you just like throw them all down very quickly. For 5 mana, putting three, up to 3 lands down for 5 mana is not bad. Again, you can mix and match them, so you could draw a card, uh, deal one damage to everything, and then or everything you don't control, and then yeah, uh, put a land down for a little bit of ramp too. So ramp is kind of like the backup option I see it on this, which is not a bad one to have. Seven cents. Number four. Okay, so cabaretti. I think I'm saying it right. Confluence. Three. Uh, red, green, white, Naya. Okay, so you can create a token that's a copy of a creature token. Oh, sorry, of a creature you control. It gains haste and sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. The sacrifice is nice because if you have anything that has like a death trigger, you're going to set off that de death trigger as many times as you make the, uh, the copies. So this can be abused very easily. Exile tar target artifact or enchantment. That's the removal I always look for, and this is you can move up to three or to the other modes if you want. Um, six CMC is high for a card. For three removal, it's not. That's two per. That's really reasonable. The fact that it's on one card is even better because there's card economy as well, right? You got to think about how many cards am I using to get this effect, uh, not just mana. Um, 
This is actually really awesome for that. Creatures target player controls get plus one, plus one, and gain first strike until end of turn. Oh my gosh, use this on someone else's turn during their combat and just like help out someone like take out the big threat at the table. Um, even if someone has like a token deck, if you give all their tokens plus three, plus three, and first strike, they can probably like do some serious damage to whoever like the big threat is at the table. Anyway, for nine cents, that's crazy. Those are some really solid options for nine cents. Number three, Obscura Confluence. So again, this is Esper. In the new Capenna thing, they call it Obscura. They have different names for all of them, which I'm not crazy about, but whatever, not gonna get into that. Anyway, one white, blue, black, as I said, Esper. Until end of turn, target creature loses all abilities and has base power in top desk 1-1. One, one. In Commander, that's crazy. You could do that to up to three creatures, there's going to be three commanders, right? Just combine this with any kind of effect that gives all creatures, or all opponents creatures, minus one, minus one. And uh, yeah, this is just removing everyone's stuff for four mana. Getting rid of everyone's commander for four mana is just absolutely insane. And Esper is pretty good with those minus effects as well. Anyway, target creature connives. So you draw a card, uh, then discard. If you discard a non-land card, put a plus one, plus one counter on that creature. Basically, you're just turning, you can, you know, get some uh, card draw or a card sorting, I should say. And uh, yeah, some plus one, plus one counters down. So it's a, it is flexible there. That's nice. And target creature, or sorry, return, target player returns a creature card from their graveyard to their hand. This is very, very politicky, right? Usually Esper is not really good at recursion the Esper can do, giving someone else another player re recursion. So you can use, like, you maybe put two creatures into back into your own hand, and then say, hey, why don't you put that, you know, one creature that's a problem for another player back into your hand as well so you can recast it in. Yeah, just uh, get some brownie points for that. Anyway, 10 cents. Number two, Maestro's Confluence. Um, so yeah, this is Maestro or Grixis, as we would probably call it usually. Three, blue, black, red. Again, six CMC, high one, but let's see. Return target multicolored instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. That is so, so good. Um, there's lots of things that allow you to like pull lands or pull like permanents out of your graveyard. Pulling your non-permanents out, your instants and sorceries, that's a, a lot more of a niche thing. So that's really, really good for that. And Grixis decks are a lot of, a lot of them are spell slinger decks. So you'd want to have this, frankly. Target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. So you could put this all on one creature, right? You could say minus nine, minus nine. Then that huge indestructible creature, it's gone. You're spending six mana to do that, so it's not great. But usually you want to do this on like three different creatures and three creature removal for six mana. That's once again very good. Goad each creature target player controls. So this is what really stands out to me as crazy. Once again, in a commander game, you have three opponents. You can goad all of the creatures each of your opponents have. So basically, you're like, everyone has to attack each other and leave me alone for a turn. Um, oh boy, that's a, it's going to be a whole lot of drama and a whole lot of like chaos. It's causing, that kind of keeps you out of it. I think that's the most Grixis ability ever. 16 cents. Number one, Broker's Confluence. So yeah, this is our uh, Bant. I almost forgot the name of it. Our Bant option. This is two green, white, blue. So let's look, proliferate. You can proliferate three times, especially with Bant. Bant is very good with proliferate or with, and even it's got Selesnya. So it's got it's uh, green, white, plus one, plus one counter thing. And then throwing blue in the mix is very good at that as well. Um, 
you can turn this into like a real threat anyway target creature phases out phasing out creatures okay do this to save your own creature right basically when it phases out you pretend it's not there for until the start of your next turn or start of start of that player's next turn or you can use it aggressively right phase out someone else's creatures then they can't block and then you just go in you hit them for free no problem mean counter target activated or triggered ability countering abilities is so uncommon you, you sh this is something you should have in every deck and I love this is the kind of thing I love having a mode for because like if it comes up and you need it it's there and if you don't when it, you kind of you don't feel too bad like proliferating three times or phasing out a bunch of creatures and getting a free attack or saving a bunch of creatures you know this is whatever you use it for you're not gonna feel like you've made a mistake I, I think anyway 55 cents the list okay Riveteer's Confluence is seven cents Cabaretti Confluence is nine cents Obscura Confluence is ten cents Maestro's Confluence is sixteen cents Poker's Confluence is fifty five cents these are way over undervalued I should say they, they you get these if you're making the tricolor decks get the confluence for it it's just even the six cmc ones i think are very very worth it anyway take it easy